This is fine. Chad! Chad, what's Chad? We need a. Greetings, I'm Shad, and uh, Tyrant, we have a, a very fun video. Yes, we do. Something very special that we've had in the works for quite a while, and uh, we figured it out. We figured it out. Because yes. that's the thing. So when it comes to fire arrows, uh, people have, you know, have looked at them, and there are valid, logical concerns about their validity, and even historical validity, yet we see them everywhere in movies. Well, you never know. Uh, after today, maybe fire arrows will become the standard. Well, that's the thing, because we wanted to not only see the limitations and difficulties in shooting fire arrows, but also find a way to make them work. Yeah, because uh, there's some obvious things. Well, mm. you can't just take something like this, wrap a little bit of twine around, mm -hmm. put some whatever you want on it that's flammable, and shoot it. The problem is, as soon as you shoot it, the air, which usually you need for a fire, you get a bit too much of it. Mm, and just, <laughs> and, and we'll show that. We'll be able to show that we'll in show this that. video. But, we figured out a method that works. Now, we're not gonna show you the method because that's not what today's video is really about. And we're not gonna show you our uh, fuel mixture either because uh, it's actually it's actually pretty dangerous to be honest. So we will just show you how they work and, when you can get them to work. And if we can get, if we can actually light things on fire by shooting oh, at them. Yes. Uh, but we, to do that. We've got a special thing for you. We, we, we went out and got stuff. Oh, did you? Uh, for this video particularly. Nate. <laughs> <laughs> This is gonna be our fire arrow target. Might be a little flammable. That, that's this is good. That's a hay bale. Please. That is a hay bale. That is a hay bale. <laughs> hay might catch on fire uh, fairly well. I mean, I'm just sorry, I'm excited to see what happens because it might not. Like there's a chance that bury, if it gets buried in the hay bale, it could snuff it out. But I have a feeling you guys have a bit uh, more pyrotechnic knowledge we, than I'm perhaps may, I'm predicting. We may have already worked through a few things so we can show what yeah. happens normally, as you were just saying. Yeah. Not that I was carrying that for kilometres to get it here, for miles as the case may be. Yeah. But uh, the technique that we've worked out may keep it alight long enough to actually light one of these, but we'll show the other stuff as well. Now, genuinely, we are going to be trying to be as safe as humanly possible today with, uh, fire. with fire, especially out, you know, in, mm. in the wilderness. And good thing we've had a lot of rain recently, and so even though it's a nice sunny day, the actual weather is perfect for this type of thing because nothing's going to be set on fire. It's, uh, and so and that's we, good. We Except say, we say don't arrows. try these things at home, but <laughs> genuinely do not try this at home. Yeah. But uh, I think it's time to head out to Shadlands. We'll That's to Shadlands. right. Well, like, you can pick that up this we time. need space. No, no, no. no. Uh, you, can, you can do that. I don't, I, don't want, I don't want to. Let's go. Shadlands. To the Shadlands. To the Shadlands. Oh, man, I love this place. He's really gorgeous. What? <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to burn some stuff while we're here. <laughs> These are just our simple arrows. Our simple yes. ones. <laughs> yes. So, to begin with, we're going to just try and do very basic kind of fire arrows that are somewhat analogous to what they might have had historically if they tried to do it. It's not a perfect analog, but it should give us a close enough comparison. And so this is basically just twine, really. Yeah. Twine wrapped. We've got some other ones that have wick in them and we've wrapped those around. We have some ones with like cotton or linen and things yeah, like that. And they've been wrapped. We've also got a pitch one. Yes, uh, like a close-ish substitute to pitch, yeah. which is probably what they would need uh, mm, to be able to do this. Something flammable. But yeah, we tried a few different uh, historical versions with different types of string um, and we may have already done some pre-testing <laughs> as, as you might be able to see. But um, yeah, this is definitely going to be interesting. I can't because... wait. I cannot wait. And then once we've done with all those, we've got our one that actually works. Well, yes. Like serious, this is this is pyrotechnic science uh, yeah. put we into did. this. We science the heck out of that to make them like physics, like serious. And you'll see, you'll see these ones. Wow. But you're gonna have to wait for that. So yes. yes. But Leah, yeah, let's let's well, talk about the misconceptions of them there first. Is, there, there are some interesting issues that you would run into right away trying to use fire arrows in multiple situations. Say I like as an adventurer, right? You can actually like in D D whatever, you're gonna have fire arrows, you know, in, in your quiver mm -hmm. that you can whip out and use. 
They not, don't have to be magic, they're just auto light. And that's what I was going to say, to not have magical ones, all of a sudden you're going to run into problems because you can't just pull out a flint, and, like you yeah, don't yeah. have the hands to be able to do exactly, it. Exactly, like you're in the bits of battle and you're just like, hold on it, hold yeah. on it. And, and it also depends, as we found with the one that we science the heck out of, it takes multiple types of fuel right. to get working. You have to mix up the fuel and then it actually needs a pre-burn. On the mm. first one, it just doesn't work. It actually needs to burn in a little bit. And then the second and then the third tries, we're getting like an 80% success rate. So mm. even with modern stuff, even when we're using like actual physics to try and get these things to work, it's still not 100%. No. The context in which they're usually proposed is in uh, offense, in terms of attacking, usually a uh, fixed location. Because if it's uh -huh. a fixed location, you don't need to travel. You can pre-prepare the thing that you're going to light the arrows with. You can set up a fire. And the trope is that it can set, usually, or they, they, they claim it could set like thatched roofs on fire. And they try and burn, you know, either towns alight with fire arrows or flammable roofs that are inside the bailey of a castle or something like that. That's usually how it's proposed. But I think that's more complicated in practice than in reality. Thatch is not straw. It's actually, they're kind of reeds types of, and- There's not much air that can get actually in there exactly. to light it up. And so. oftentimes, if the arrow gets buried in the thatch, it'll snuff it out. Exactly. Well, I think it's more to do with how long it's a, it's a light. How yes. long your arrow is light. If it just lasts a few seconds, it's not gonna set anything on fire. But if mm. you fire an arrow and it just stays alight, and then it uses the actual wood on the arrow as it's fuel, once it gets down to it, it's going to be on fire for quite a while. And in the middle of battle, people aren't going to be trying to put out arrows of exactly. fire. They're and going it, it actually could be dis disadvantageous to have an army firing these because you're giving away the exact location of your archers. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of reasons why you might want to use it for fear. You might want to use it because it's very specific to an attack. Um, you might not want to use it for a whole heap. But the, one of the main things I think we're testing out today is can we get them working and get them staying lit in the air? Because as we we're talking about wind resistance as mm -hmm. it's going through the air, just it wants to put them out. The ones that we have invented, they do stay alight, they but do. we are not 100% sure if they stay alight during air flight. We know that once they hit the target, they stay alight. Mm -hmm. But we're not sure about in between. Yeah, that, that's as that weird as That might confuse it? people. That might confuse, because these geniuses here have figured out a way, of, basically it's a- We're not telling you. We're not telling you no. how, we're not telling you how it's done, but it can relight itself. It yes. relights itself once it's- Which it, is uh, very lights. clever. So, I think we'll test the, the we, historical ones, well, the well, ones that yeah, we will. simple ones. We'll test ones. the historical ones, but like, just thinking like, arrows can be quite useful in, you know, with fire. You could toast marshmallows. I'm pretty hungry. You are? You better, Should we have lunch? Got, yeah, you've got to pre, pre warm this. You may as well find it useful at the same time. Um, it is lunchtime. All this fire makes me hungry. Let's, let's take lunch. Well, yeah. well, you're in luck, because this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. I've genuinely been using HelloFresh for years now, well before they were ever a sponsor in fact. And as a result, I can give them my honest and full recommendation. The food is genuinely delicious, it's extremely nutritious, it's super convenient, and it will take the hassle out of mealtime this spring by delivering pre-proportioned ingredients that's really easy to prepare. In fact, those pre-proportioned ingredients cuts down on your food waste by at least 23% compared to grocery shopping. It's good for your wallet, it's good for the planet, and I found it for myself. I've never had any wasted food when using HelloFresh. Something that I really like is that they have quick and easy meals, like HelloFresh's easy clean up one pan Santa for pork tacos, or veggie friendly sweet potato and pepper quesadillas, ready in around 15 minutes. And for someone like me, that's just super convenient. Their variety is also tremendous. They have 40 different recipes and over 100 seasonal convenience items to choose from each week. There's heaps of variety and genuinely options for everyone and every lifestyle. You can try it now easier than ever before with this brilliant deal. All you have to do is go to HelloFresh.com and use promo code SHADOWVERSITY50 for 50% off, plus your first box ships free. I first tried HelloFresh with a deal like this. I was blown away and I've used it ever since. So once again, if you want to give it a go, all you have to do is go to HelloFresh.com and use promo code SHADOWVERSITY50 for 50% off, plus your first box ships free. Give it a go, you won't be disappointed, and thank you very much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. All right, this actually looks amazing. Well, I can't wait to it. It smells really, it's really a... good too. Oh, curry. Yes, yeah, curry. I love curry. So medieval cookware is, uh, eatware is always mm. a little... Yeah, I, what do you think of the medieval forks? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> My rice is really good. It's really good. 
Mmm. Oh man. How I forget, like genuinely the sauces just make it. I, mm. I was. And it's really easy because the sauce, like, it mm. comes pre prepared. You don't need to cook anything with this particular one. It was really easy. Throw the sauce in mm. and done. Oh, mate. And we have fun doing it on the brazier as well. Uh, <laughs> we have, we, we're having fun with the fire. It's been a fire sort of day. And it really has. It really has. Yeah. But now we need to go see how uh, how we go with these fire arrows. But still, genuinely, HelloFresh is brilliant. Thank you to them for sponsoring this video. And uh, we'll see if we can set some other things on fire. We are getting very close to lighting these babies up. But before we do, we should mention bow poundage. And this is important because <clears throat> there'll be some testing today where we're going to be using the 40 pound bow. Yes. Because we have to. Uh, first off, as we said, air resistance puts these things out. So sometimes we need to use this to keep things alight. And also our slow-mo. We want to get good slow-mo mm. shots for you guys. And uh, these 100 pounds, they, they shoot fast. Now, the thing about uh, this is that it is still informative because if these arrows get like puffed out from a 40 pound, mm. there's no way that survive yeah. a higher poundage. But for, you know, we'll do most of the tests on the 40 pound, but for the sake of, you know, interest completion. and completion, <laughs> we will be shooting a couple on the heavier bows. So this long bow here is a hundred pound. This short bow is 110 pound. It's the heaviest pound bow. Don't be deceived by People the size. People get confused because they see us with both of these bows <laughs> and they think they're the same. This one's 40, that one's 110. 110. So this is actually a big boy and it'll be really interesting to see the results on that. But for most of them, will be on the 40 pound so we can try and catch some of it in we don't have an actual slow-mo camera but we can do high frame rate and try and capture it as best we can and see what happens with it all right let's light that one up let's do it okay so we have one now this has already been set on fire previously just to make sure it's working mm -hmm. it's a more close historical analog where we have some you know twine wrapped to it now there was flammable materials or liquids in the medieval period what you more often find, more common, would be stuff like lamp oil. Yep. Okay. And there were oils that were refined to be a bit more closer to the kerosene even, but there were options like that. There okay? were. There were. There's a lot of different types of oils and flammable materials, mm -hmm. just not the type of things that we have that are so yeah, heavily yeah. refined today. Exactly. And so the ones we're using are more refined, but it'll give somewhat of a, a comparison because if it snuffs out with more flammable, refined, you know, um, liquids on it, the historical ones aren't going to have a chance. No, no. I, I, uh, I think what we're going to find is it's going to light really, really well. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as you get that instant air pressure on it. I, I'm interested. So to kick us right off, we're, for a lot of the ones we're going to be using the 40 pound bow, we're just going straight with the 100 pound bow to get a, a more closer analog of could this survive? I am happy to be proven wrong, but let me uh, go and get a secret, a secret recipe of fuel and I will light this and uh, we'll go from there. Just to be clear, we're firing down towards water. Yes. yes. We're being safe. Everything's good. All righty, here we go. All right. Firing in three, two, one. That went out. Okay, we're on the 40 pound bow now to see if there's any chance that it'll stay lit a bit longer. Uh, let's find out. All right, so three, two. One. Wow, that went out instantly. It does. And that was that was not even half draw because I didn't want to hit the flame on it and just poof. I noticed that. I've never seen Shad fire an arrow that went like that before <laughs> and the flame it was still a, went out. It was on a 40 pound bow at half draw. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Well, all right, so this is the um cut. It's an oil light, oil byproduct substitute, basically. That was um, the equivalent. The equivalent of it's not modern lamp oil, mm -hmm. but it is kind of the equivalent of a type of oil that they would have that had. they could have had. Yeah, with just twine. Now, let's try out pitch. Yeah. Look at this. Look at the pitch. I mean, these are like they look real authentic pitch. Well, not authentic, but authentic enough pitch arrows, right? Wow. It does bring something to my mind though, because people have explored the you know, feasibility of, of uh, fire arrows. Mm -hmm. And there is this kind of interesting arrowhead that people have uh, proposed for that almost makes like a cage to put a really thick bit of wadded material soaked in pitch inside to make it basically relight. If it can keep the embers inside this kind of cage mm -hmm. to force fire arrows to work with more historical materials. As to like what uses, we kind of fall into that same conundrum. Like, like would they really light 
you know, thatch roofs on fire, maybe signal arrows at night time, maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. actually signal arrows are probably a good, a good use if you can keep the thing lit, because as soon as it leaves the bow... That's what I'm finding. Yeah. Now, we didn't have much time to prepare for this one. We had, well, we had enough time, but <laughs> if we ever revisit this topic, mm -hmm. then I will do a custom arrowhead. I will machine oh. a custom Ooh. arrowhead that is nice and light and that works. You know what? But if we do a revisit, I actually want to propose something as well. I would like to make real medieval pitch rather rather than this, which is a very close analogue but isn't quite historical. So mm. I think that if we ever do a revisit, let us know in the comments. I mean, that'd be great. The Mate. more support that you guys are able to give us, the more viability of us doing larger projects like this. Mm. So genuinely, if you're able to donate anything that you can, join up with the YouTube memberships, donate a dollar to five dollars on Patreon or Subscribestar or Utreon. That, that helps more than I can express, genuinely, guys. And we've got uh, exclusive content coming to those uh, platforms because mm. we make a lot of content and we want to actually show you guys more than just what we can do at the moment. So, help us out there. Hang on, hang on, did that smother it? No, it no. didn't. It just gave it more fuel. Oh my God. Get off. <laughs> so, if we're going from the natural break up. If we're going from the... It mean a lot. Let's shoot the pitch arrows. Yes. This is uh, our pitch analog. Mm. Uh, uh, let's, see. let's see. You ready, Chad? Yeah, I'm ready. There we go. All, All right. right. All right. Firing in yeah. three, two, one. What, what we saw before with the fire actually mm. staying behind the arrow going through, mm. much more visible this time because it was a bigger ball of fire. Mm -hmm. It just looked like it stayed there and the arrow went by. It's left it behind. Most of the arrows that we've created are relatively light relatively light that one this one is not this is heavy it's and got a it heavy is. lump and it just mm. but that is this is a very weak bow at not even a like half draw i think stop blaming the bow it's the bow's <laughs> fault we're, we're doing 100 pound doing it i'll draw further back on this and because it's a 100 pound bow half draw of this is already more powerful than the 40 pound so yeah, great. 40 pound at four whoa look at this baby three ready two one that went out completely. Yeah, though. the pitch looked like it's it blew the, And actually, the pitch didn't even stay on with that one. All right, you can get that arrow. I'll get a new arrow. Which which arrow are we doing now? Another pitch. You want to do another pitch? Another pitch. You think this is a pitch arrow? No. I I pitched the I pitched the arrow. I pitched the pitch arrow. It's funny. So we're actually running into an interesting thing. Okay, with the pitch arrows. We did try and wrap it tight, but the arrows accelerate so fast that even the pitch has a tough time sticking exactly. on it. Exactly, and for those who don't know, pitch is kind of like a goo, kind of like roof sealer. It's, a, it's an all-purpose thing that medieval mm. people used. Um, so it does go hard, but it's gooey. You can't wrap it until... It's funny, I think we're having better luck with the twine and oil mm. um, uh, arrows than the pitch arrows. But even so, it was still going out. So... Yes, well... I noticed something interesting in the first um, twine oil arrow is that I saw a distinct puff of smoke when it hit the tar when it hit the ground, and so there might be some heat still left in it. I want to try and shoot it into a hay bale just to see what happens. Okay, all right. Well, let's go and set one of them up and give that a shot. So let's see what this does to the hay bale. So if this had remained lit. This would almost have been a perfect hit because the wadding is sitting right next to the straw and the, the continual flame would have lit it up easily. Mm. The, the, and, but no, that was, that was gone before it even hit. What are you thinking now? Because we have our arrows that will. Oh yeah, yeah. Get everything alive. Exactly. Because science and physics. Looking at Wait. most of the ways you could try and achieve this historically, we're running into the same Criticism a lot of people have put up against fire is that they just go out mm. like they're very hard to make work with medieval technology And even when you do the actual viability and uses of what you would need them for are very few and far between But it doesn't mean you can't make it work and they wouldn't have a lighter on them No, no, no they which is how we've, we've been lighting it very very easily yeah. Um, yeah, but no like like we said at the start of the video We've been using chemistry and physics. I said science and physics a moment ago But <laughs> we've been using chemistry and physics specifically to get this working um, So we have ones that as Tyron said about 80 to 95 percent chance that they will stay lit Which is better than uh, basically zero after the first burn 
That's important. The that is. Smell. That is. So we've found um, that you do very much need to light them, let them sit there, maybe even give them a test fire. But mm -hmm. you, we know they're going to go out. Second, third, fourth. You're good. Oh yeah. I can't wait. I can't. Let's check out what these are. Uh, super fire arrows are. And here they are. Mm. Okay. We uh, have them all wrapped up in the old tatami mat because this is cutting edge technology. I see what you did there. <laughs> uh, but this is them. Oh wow, like, I, I see like a, a bit of a wind protector on it there and is. everything. Yeah. Now imagine if this was actually properly machined. Yes. For the job. <laughs> so there is different, we can't really go through what we've done, like, uh, like we said at the start of the video, but you can kind of see somewhat of how this thing works. Um, but we're but, not going to go into detail, are we, Nate? Are you ready to fire? Oh, I am so ready. I can't wait. Okay. Uh, Let's do it. So All right. This is the 40 pound bow. Yes. We're using a 40 pound bow. Uh, to see, I because high chance of staying alight with a 40 pound bow. We will test it with the stronger ones. We will for the second light. The, mm -hmm. the first light might just be a bit of a dud as it needs to burn in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But after that, we are in business. Let's do it. All right. All right. Look at that. This is uh, our, our invented one. <laughs> we'll give it a few seconds just to give it a little bit of a burn in time. Are you ready, Shad? I'm ready. All right. We're good to go. Firing in three, two, one. We're running into some difficulties, but it's also giving us important information here. We'll, see, we'll keep going and we'll see what we can get. Three, two, one. Still warm. Just making sure the smoke's coming off of this and not mm. that. That sounded better. And still on, better. still on fire! <laughs> that, that stayed on fire the entire I probably, arc. I should probably hurry up. We need that arrow, so. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, like, just, just so people realize, we managed to get one that won't go out, but then it burnt through. Ah! Look, and it's still on fire! Ah! And it's still going! It's like an Olympic torch, you just run around. Yeah! Ah! I got it. Gosh. Alrighty, ready? That stayed alight the entire time. So, that's actually really significant. The entire, the entire arrow got buried and it still stayed alive. Yes. Because yeah, it, it, it followed it through. It didn't get oh, smothered. Oh, no. Look. We're, but setting them on fire, I don't know. Yeah, but I, you know. Space <laughs> about the fletching. Of all the things. All right, this is the Warbow, 110 Warbow. pounds. Let's do, though, not fully drawing. But, Fi uh, yep. Firing see. in three, two, one. Uh, I think it worked. I think I think it worked. Now, thatch would be harder to set on fire. This yes. is dry straw, but uh, it it works. So, uh, oh. what do you think's next? I think we all should have a go. Yes, let's do that. Let's I, do I, you ready? Well, I mean, I can't shoot a boat and they trip me with a fireball. Gosh, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> light your arrows <laughs> and ready. One, two. This one's a light. Do you reckon it can... What, light this one? <laughs> so it's taking away all the attention from the fact that I missed. And when you're shooting at a particularly flammable target, well, anything could happen.
So yeah, they can certainly light things on fire at a distance. Yeah, I would say that it's definitely oh. based about the arrow. Well, it's still good. It's still good. It's still good. It's still good. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hey. Phased about the arrow. Yeah, well, look, it's good. We can still use them. They're still wow, good. that is heat coming off that. Yeah. That was loads of fun. The end was a little stressful. <laughs> like that was going up the tree, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So we were able to get it to work. Wasn't easy, even with modern materials. When we were doing our testing, it worked heaps. It we did. Have, we have footage of it. it we, I know, I know. Back-to-back uh, oh, -back shots. Yeah. All right. We're done it, boys. It can... Uh, work reliably but at other times it can be a bit more difficult and remember a lot of them was with the 40 pound bow yes. uh, on a heavier war bow even more difficult i'm not sure i think there might have been like one maybe two shots where with oh, the, the ball bow, bow. yeah that, that stayed alive but i mean once it actually got working i'm sure the other half of the arrow was in there somewhere but it got working, <laughs> it got working. uh look my assumptions haven't really been dissuaded from the tests here Ooh. So, so no, I agree. The test that we've done today didn't show that. The test that Tyrant and I did were a lot more reliable. We'll probably mm. put some of that footage in because we yeah, were yeah. able to fire like back to back. Mm. It was mm. just the first one where we need to burn it in a little bit. And then I don't know what was happening today. Well, well when, I, when I say my assumptions haven't been dissuaded, like well, you can make it work, but yeah. to make it reliable, but then viable, because you might have noticed there, there could have been some I don't keep going. Okay, there could have been some additional uh, encouragement on the straw to help it oh, I mean, set on fire. Have like, you got any proof of that? <laughs> I don't, so, you know. Look, it did start to get caught on fire when there was no encouragement on it. it did, yes. This is dry straw. Okay. I mean, oftentimes you're not going to have a target like this. This is not a good analog for thatch because thatch is not like this at all. And so all the kind of issues that you would have in using fire arrows in a functional way kind of still exist. You can make it work. Is, is, is it out yet? I, I saw fire. <laughs> I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did, Nate. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe we have to do like actually a custom arrowhead specifically to do this sort of thing because we tried to do that a little bit with our, uh, you know, uh, a DIY way, but- mm -hmm. way basically, but it, it, like you, Maybe we'll just have a really lucky day when we were firing our <laughs> test shots. And then today we'll just... Or we could have just had poor luck today, but we still got a lot of interesting information from it. We confirmed a lot of the assumptions about one of the biggest problems with fire arrows is that they'll just go straight out after you shoot them unless you're doing something really creative. And you guys put something together really creative to make it work, and it did work. It's, but, you know, the, the, these are the limitations of fire arrows. They're overused in film, TV shows and everything. It's a trope. Rarely is it... But was it not fun? It was... Oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing. It was heaps of fun, but rarely is it truly practical. There you go. It, mad fun. Like, such a great video. We appreciate all you guys for joining with us on this adventure. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you again on the next video on Shadowversity. So until that time, farewell. Coming soon to Shadowversity. So as we said before, we are going to be starting off with the smaller myths. Yeah. Put the mask on first. Alrighty. Totally, totally trust. So we have armoured up all of his vitals. Alright, alright, we do need this to survive at least long enough for... Woo! Yeah.